Robert Kiyosaki, what is the cash flow quadrant? So you've been working hard for years, climbing the ladder. Maybe you're still near the bottom of the ladder, or maybe you even got near the top. Where you are on the ladder doesn't really matter. What matters is the question that you may have forgotten to stop and ask before putting in all that time and effort climbing, where is this ladder planted? It doesn't matter how fast or high you climb on the ladder if it's leaning against the wrong wall. The purpose of this chapter is for you to stop climbing for a minute and see where your ladder is planted. And, if you're not happy where it is, to find out where you might want to move it. How do you make the money you make? Most people assume that their financial standing is defined by how much they earn, how much they're worth, or some combination of both. And there's no doubt that this has some bearing. Forbes magazine defines, rich, as a person who earns in excess of $1 million per year, about $83,333 per month, or just under $20,000 a week, and, poor, as someone who earns less than $25,000 a year. But even more important than the quantity of money you make is the quality of money you make. In other words, not just how much you make, but how you make it, where it comes from. There are actually four distinct sources of cash flow. Each is quite different from the other, and each defines and determines a very different lifestyle, regardless of the amount of cash you earn. After publishing Rich Dad Poor Dad, I wrote a book to explain these four different income worlds. Many people have said that this book, Cash Flow Quadrant, is the most important writing I've done because it goes right to the heart of the crucial issues involved for people who are ready to make true changes in their lives. The Cash Flow Quadrant represents the different methods by which a cash income is generated. For example, an employee earns money by holding a job and working for someone else or a company. The self-employed are people who earn money working for themselves, either as solo operators or through their own small business. A business owner owns a large business typically defined as 500 employees or more that generates money. Investors earn money from their various investments, in other words, money generating more money. A equals employee. S equals self-employed a small business owner. B equals business owner. I equals investor. Which quadrant do you live in? In other words, from which quadrant do you receive the majority of the income on which you live? The A quadrant. The overwhelming majority of us learn, live, love, and leave this life entirely within the A quadrant. Our educational system and culture train us, from the cradle to the grave, to live in the world of the A quadrant. The operating philosophy for this world is what my poor dad, my real father, taught me, and what you probably learned, too, when you were growing up, go to school, study hard and get good grades, and get a good job with benefits at a great company. The S quadrant. Driven by the urge for more freedom and self-determination, a lot of people migrate from the A quadrant to the S quadrant. This is the place where people go to, strike out on their own, and pursue the American dream. The S quadrant includes a huge range of earning power, all the way from the teenage freelance babysitter or landscaper just starting out in life, to the highly paid private practice lawyer, consultant, or public speaker. But whether you are earning $8 an hour or $80,000 a year, the S quadrant is typically a trap. You may have thought you were, firing your boss, but what really happened is that you just changed bosses. You are still an employee. The only difference is that when you want to blame your boss for your problems, that boss is you. The S quadrant can be a thankless and difficult place to live. Everyone picks on you here. The government picks on you, you spend one full day a week just in tax compliance. Your employees pick on you, your customers pick on you, and your family picks on you because you never take any time off. How can you? If you do, you lose ground. You have no free time because if you take time off, the business doesn't earn money. In a very real way, the S stands for slavery, you don't really own your business, your business owns you. The B quadrant. The B quadrant is where people go to create big businesses. The difference between an S business and a B business is that you work for your S business, but your B business works for you. I have many B businesses, including my manufacturing business, my real estate business, mining companies, and others. Those who live and work in the B quadrant make themselves recession-proof because they control the source of their own income. The I quadrant. This is not rocket science. My rich dad taught me to live in the I quadrant by playing Monopoly, and we all know how that works, four greenhouses, one red hotel, four greenhouses, one red hotel. Changing jobs is not changing quadrants. Now let me explain why it's so important to understand these different quadrants. How often have you heard someone complain about their job, then decide to make a change, only to end up a few years later with the same old complaints? I keep working harder and harder, but I'm just not getting ahead. Every time I get a raise, it gets eaten up by taxes and higher expenses. I'd rather be doing fill in the blank, but I can't afford to go back to school and learn a whole new profession at this stage of my life. This job stinks. My boss stinks. Life stinks. ETC. These, and dozens of others like them, are all statements that reveal a person who was trapped, trapped not in a certain job but in an entire quadrant. The problem is, most of the time when people do take the initiative to actually make a change in their lives, all they do is change jobs. What they need to do is change quadrants. The left-hand side, the ANS quadrants, is where most people live. That's where we are brought up and trained to live. 
get good grades, so you can get a good job, we are told. But your grades don't matter in the B quadrant. Your banker doesn't ask to see your report card, he wants to see your financial statement. Breaking away from those typical job structures and creating your own stream of income puts you in the best position to weather an economic storm, simply because you are no longer dependent on a boss or on the economy to determine your annual income. Now you determine it. At least 80% of the population lives in the left-hand side of this picture. The A quadrant, especially, is where we are taught we will find safety and security. On the other hand, the right-hand side, the B and I quadrants, is where freedom resides. If you want to live on that side, then you can make it happen. But if you want the relative safety of the left-hand side, then maybe what I have to share here is not for you. That's a decision only you can make. Which quadrant do you live in? Which quadrant do you want to live in? Your core financial values. The four quadrants are not just four different business structures, they are four different mindsets. Which quadrant you choose to earn your primary income from has less to do with external circumstances, your education, training, the economy, what appear to be the available opportunities around you, and much more to do with who you are at your core, your strengths, weaknesses, and central interests. It is a matter of your core financial values. It is these core differences that attract us to or repel us from the different quadrants. This is important to grasp because it means that shifting from the A or S quadrant over to the B quadrant isn't as simple as filling out a change of address form at the post office. You not only change what you do, but in a very real way, you also change who you are. Or at least, how you think. Some people may love being employees, while others hate it. Some people love owning companies, but do not want to run them. Certain people love investing, while others see only the risk of losing money. Most of us are a little of each of these characters. It is also important to note that you can be rich or poor in all of the four quadrants. There are people who earn millions and people who go bankrupt in each of the quadrants. Living in any one quadrant does not in itself necessarily guarantee financial success. You can tell which quadrant people are living in by listening to their words. When I was 9 years old, I began sitting in with my rich dad when he interviewed people for possible hiring. From these interviews, I learned to listen for people's core values, values that my rich dad said came from their souls. Here are some key phrases that emerge from each quadrant along with a snapshot of the core values of each. A quadrant values. I am looking for a safe, secure job with good pay and excellent benefits. For someone living in the A quadrant, the core value is security. You might be the top earning vice president of a company yet still share the same core values as the company's janitor, who earns a tenth of your salary. A person in the A quadrant, regardless if he is the janitor or the president, often thinks or says words such as, I am looking for a safe, secure job with benefits. Or, how much do we get for overtime? Or, how many paid holidays do we have? When I'm having a conversation with someone in the A quadrant and I talk about how much I love starting my own businesses, he may say, yeah, but isn't that risky? We each see life from our own core values. What is exciting for me is frightening to someone else. This is why, when I'm in the company of people who live in the ANS quadrants, I usually talk about the weather, sports, or what is on television. S quadrant values. If you want something done right, do it yourself. For people in the S quadrant, the core value is independence. They want the freedom to do what they want. When a person says, I'm going to quit my job and go out on my own, the path taken is from the A quadrant to the S quadrant. The people found in the S quadrant are small business owners, mom and pop businesses, specialists, and consultants. For example, I have a friend who installs big screen televisions, phone systems, and security systems in rich people's homes. He has a staff of three and is happy to be the boss of just three people. He is a hardcore, hardworking S. Commissioned salespeople, such as real estate agents and insurance brokers, are in the S quadrant. The S quadrant is also filled with professional people, such as doctors, lawyers, and accountants who do not belong to a large medical, legal, or accounting firm. People living in the S quadrant often take great pride in the work of their own hands or brains. If they had a theme song, it would be either, Nobody Does It Better, or, My Way. Yet, behind the facade of independence, you will often find a lack of trust at the core of this person's approach to business, which also means his approach to life, because how we view our business tends to be how we view everything. An S is often paid by commission or by the amount of time spent on a job. For example, an S may be heard saying words such as, my commission is 6% of the total purchase price. Or, I charge $100 an hour. Or, my fee is cost plus 10%. Whenever I meet someone from the A or S quadrant who is having difficulty making the transition to the B quadrant, I usually see a person with great technical or management skills but little leadership ability. My rich dad used to say, if you're the leader of the team and you are also the smartest person on the team, your team is in trouble. People in the S quadrant often don't work too well with teams, they may even have a big of an ego problem. To make the jump from S to B quadrant, what is needed is a quantum jump not in technical skills, but in leadership skills. As I've said many times before, in the real world, the A students often go to work for the C students, and the B students work for the government. 
If you've ever heard yourself saying, if you want something done right, do it yourself, or if you tend to think that way, it might be a good time to take a good long look at that philosophy. B Quadrant Values I'm looking for the best people to join my team. For people in the B Quadrant, the core value is wealth building. People who start from nothing and build great B Quadrant businesses are often people with powerful life missions, who value a great team and efficient teamwork and want to serve and work with as many people as possible. While a person in the S quadrant wants to be the best in his or her field, a B quadrant person wants to build a team out of other people who are the best in their fields. Henry Ford surrounded himself with people smarter than he was. While an S quadrant business person is often the smartest or most talented person in the room, this is often not true for a B quadrant business person. When you own a B quadrant business, you will often deal with people who are much smarter, more experienced, and more capable than you are. My rich dad had no formal education, but I watched him deal with bankers, lawyers, accountants, investment advisors, and experts, many of whom had advanced degrees. In raising money for his businesses, he often dealt with people who were far richer than he was. If he had lived by the motto, if you want something done right, do it yourself, he would have ended up a complete failure. When it comes to being paid, a true B-quadrant person can leave his or her business and still get paid. In most cases, if someone in the S-quadrant stops working, the income stops also. Therefore, a question you may want to ask yourself now is, if I stop working today, how much income continues to come in? If your income stops in 6 months or less, then, chances are, you are in the A or S quadrants. A person in the B or I quadrants can stop working for years and the money will continue to come in. I quadrant values. What's my return on investment? What people in the I quadrant value most is financial freedom. The investor loves the idea of his money working instead of him working. Investors invest in many things. They may invest in gold coins, real estate, businesses, or paper assets such as stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. If your income comes from company or government retirement plans, rather than your own personal investing knowledge, then that is income from the A quadrant. In other words, your boss or the business is still paying its bill for your years of service. Words an investor might be heard saying are, I'm receiving a 20% return on my assets, or, show me the company's financials, or, how much deferred maintenance is on the property. Different quadrants, different investors. In today's world, we all need to be investors. However, our school systems do not teach us much about investing. Oh, I know that some schools teach stock picking, but to me, that is not investing, that's gambling. Years ago, my rich dad pointed out to me that most employees invest in mutual funds or savings. He also said, just because you're successful in one quadrant, such as the A, S, or B, does not mean you will be successful in the I quadrant. Doctors are often the worst investors. My rich dad also pointed out to me that different quadrants invest in different ways. For example, a person in the S quadrant might be heard saying, I don't invest in real estate because I don't want to fix toilets. A person in the B quadrant addressing the same investment challenge might say, I want to hire a good property management company to fix my toilets at night. In other words, an S quadrant investor will think he has to do the property maintenance on his own, an AB quadrant investor will hire another company to do the property maintenance for him. Different people, different mindsets, different quadrants, different values. By now, you probably figured out where I'm going with this. It comes down to a pretty simple thing, if you want to get rich, you are going to have to move. You don't need a new job, you need a new address. If you want control over your life and destiny, if you want real freedom, the freedom to call your shots, set your schedule, spend time with your family and with yourself, doing the things you love to do, if you want to live the life you were designed to live, no holds barred, a life of passion and excitement and fulfillment, in short, if you want to be rich and live rich, then it's time to pack up your stuff and move. It's time to leave the left side of the chart and move over to the B and I quadrants. One more note on the difference between the S quadrant and the B quadrant. B business owners can go on vacation forever because they own a system, not a job. If the B is on vacation, the money still comes in. To be successful as A B requires 1. Ownership or control of systems and 2. The ability to lead people. For S's to evolve into B's, they need to convert who they are and what they know into a system, and many aren't able to do that. Or they're often too attached to the system to let go and let other people in. Most new entrepreneurs get excited about a new product or an opportunity they think will make them rich. Unfortunately, many of them focus on the product or opportunity rather than invest the time designing the business around the product or opportunity. Before quitting your job, it might be a good idea to find a mentor who has been an entrepreneur. All too often, people ask business advice from people who have business experience as an employee, but not as an entrepreneur. I recommend keeping your daytime job while you start a part-time business, not for the money, but for the experience. That means, even if your part-time business does not make any money, you are gaining something far more important than money, real-life experience. Not only will you learn about business, you will learn a lot about yourself.